Welcome back everyone. In the last part, we had set up sign in and sign up for our subscription blogging app. And in this part, we're going to start building out the user profile, which includes uploading a profile picture. So without further ado, drop a like down below, open up your project and let's jump back into our XC workspace. So Essentially, what we want to do is we want to build a reusable view controller that is capable of showing us any user. And the reason I say any user is because not only do we want to show the current user who is signed into the app, but in theory, when we're looking at somebody's blog posts, we want to be able to go to their profile as well. So first, I'm going to go ahead and select our 12 Pro Max simulator. Let's go ahead and give this a run. And then I've also got Firebase opened up here on the right hand side. We're going to be using Firebase storage to upload our actual profile picture. And we're also going to be using the real time uh, Firestore database where we have actually inserted our user objects, if you guys recall, to the previous video. So let's talk about what we want to do. So we uh, are caching into user defaults when the user signs up as well as signs in some of their data. Now that's going to be important to derive the current user. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So here in the sign up controller, you can see that we are caching the user's email as well as their name. Now one thing that we need to adjust in sign in to build our profile is here we're only caching the user email but not the name. And the reason we want to cache their name uh, is just for performance sake. Now because we don't have it initially here, on our profile, we're going to have the profile take in an email address and if the username is not set locally in the user defaults cache for whatever reason, we know we're going to need to go ahead and uh, fetch it from our database. Now, The email is a really important thing here because we're going to use the email as a document ID. You can see here, hello underscore iOS Academy underscore IO. And this points to the document in the database where it said name resides. So so while our project here takes its lovely time and builds, let's open up our profile view controller and let's get to it. So I believe we stuck it under core tabs. We've got profile view controller right here. All right. And let's see what we've got going on in here because it looks like we already have some stuff in here. So we have our sign out function. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, document it. So this is going to be our sign out function, which we have already added here. Here we're setting up that sign out button. Maybe I'm going to go ahead and abstract this to its own function. We'll say set up sign out button just like that. I like to keep our code segments nice and modular so one function doesn't get uh, you know too big. When it gets too big, it becomes more and more uh, difficult to manage. So. Uh, modularize, modularize. So cool. So what do we want on the profile? So in terms of UI, our profiles are going to be fairly simple. We're going to have a profile photo. We're going to have the user's full name. And we are also going to have uh, the user's email address. And finally, we are going to have the user's blog posts. So these are going to be the posts that the user has made uh, throughout the duration of you know them being on this app. So we're going to say list of posts. Now we don't actually have the ability to you know make a post yet. So let's uh, figure out how this is going to work. So in terms of a UI component, you could go away, get away with using something like a table view here. You could use a scroll view as well. Now I think a table view is a perfect element for this since it'll nicely accommodate our list of blog posts as well as we have the header at our disposal to show the profile photo, name, and email address. So let's go ahead and use a table view. So I'm going to keep these comments up here so we know what we're building and then we'll delete them one by one as we add them. So here I'm going to create a private table view and we're going to mainly focus on the header since we don't actually have the ability to author posts yet when we do add that ability I believe I want to say I'll be doing that in the next video we'll come back and adjust this accordingly so on our table view we're just going to register a pretty vanilla UI table view cell for an ID of cell just like that. Now we want to make sure we go ahead and add this as a sub view. We're going to go ahead and assign the table of views delegate. 
its data source. You want to conform to those protocols respectively up here. So it's going to be UI table view delegate and UI table view data source, just like that. Now we want to make sure we don't forget to give our table view a frame because then we just wouldn't see it, which is not good. So we're going to override view did layout sub views and make our table views frame view dot bounds, otherwise known as taking up the entirety of the view. Now what else do we need? So we want to have a header for our table. How do we go ahead and do that? So I'm going to abstract this into a function called setUpTable, and we're going to do the header in another function. So we'll say private func setUpTable, just like that. And what we want to do is we want to use the email address that is you know passed into this profile controller to populate this profile. But the one weird thing that we're not doing right now is we're not even passing in an email. So how the heck do we accomplish that? So we want to go ahead and add a property on here called uh, email. Or we can maybe go ahead and call it current email, which is the email associated with this you know current profile context. It's going to be a string. And we're going to have this uh, view controller take in this email and its initializer, just like that. So we're going to say self.currentEmails, current email. We're going to call super init, passing in nil for the nib name as well as the bundle. And we'll also want to bring in the required initializer since that is required whenever you override the initializer. I'm going to move our table view up here since I like sticking the properties above the initializer. And if you go ahead and do a command B now, you're going to see that you have a couple errors. The first errors that you'll see up here is that we're not conforming to the table view uh, proper protocols. So we're going to go ahead and hit fix and it's going to stub them out. I'm going to move them to the bottom of our code here. Now in these table view functions, we're going to be showing, uh, you're going to use them to show the blog posts. So we have self or row at index. We're also going to want number of rows. I'm going to go ahead and say, maybe we'll say 10 to start off with. Now in here, we're going to say let cell is going to be table view, dq, a reusable cell with the id cell for index path. We're going to simply return the cell. Now when we actually hook up showing our blog post, we're going to want to use a custom cell so we can see the nice title and maybe a preview of the blog post text, etc, etc. But for now, we're just going to say blog post goes here so we have a nice placeholder. If you hit command B again, we're still going to have an error. And that's mainly going to be coming from the fact that we're not passing in a uh, email address into this profile controller yet. And I believe that's in the tab bar uh, controller. So if you go to your errors here, you're going to see missing argument. And this is, like I said, in the profile controller for the tab bar here. So how the heck do we populate this? Well, if you think about it, we show the tab bar controller upon sign in or sign up or when the user launches the app in the authenticated state already. So if we jump into our sign in view controller, you'll notice that before we create the tab bar controller, we already are caching the email. So the simplest way that you can get away with fixing this is you can read from user defaults, the user's email, since we know this is going to be the current user who signed in their profile. So I'm going to go ahead and say here, uh, guard, so maybe we can actually do it at the top here. We'll go ahead and say guard let current user email, and this is going to be from user defaults, the string for key, so this one here, and the key is going to be email, which is what we have used to assign it. Now we're going to want to go ahead and unwrap this with a guard and a let, which is a bind, because we might have you know not set this variable for whatever reason in user defaults. And once you actually have that, you can actually pass it in directly just like that, and you'll be good to go. If you do a command B, you'll notice that everything is building. And now let me go into my profile view controller. In our view to load, we're going to set a title for the profile controller based on, you know, the current email address. Now, eventually it's going to be the user's name, but for now, let's just make sure that we are in fact getting the email address properly set. So we'll go ahead and say title equals current email, go ahead and run your app. And I believe we'll need to sign in first since we did a fresh install and let's make sure that on our profile 
uh, screen, we're seeing a title which matches our email. So let's see if I can remember what our credentials here are. I believe it's hot. hello at iosacademy.io. And our password was super secure. We had made it password. Let's make sure that's still the case. Boom, we're signed in. And if you come here, if you look at that, we have our email address set as the title here. So looking pretty good. And we even have our table view. So we're in pretty good shape to move on forward. So we have set the large uh, style here for the title. I actually like it. We might change it later on. You know, if I change my mind, it's very subjective, but I digress. We're looking pretty good. So now that we actually have an email address set, what we want to go ahead and do in the setup table function is also say set up table header and the table header is going to have things uh, to go ahead and fetch the user's name their profile picture and assign it if they have one we already have their email but this is the function where all this is going to take place so the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is create a header view now this header view is simply going to be a ui view with a frame and this is going to be zero zero view dot width and height is also going to be view.width. In other words, this is gonna be a square. So now that we've created this, we can go ahead and say header view dot background color, and maybe we'll give this a nice background color of system blue so we can actually see it. We'll go ahead and say table view, table view dot table header view is going to be a header view just like that. And now we wanna populate this header view as well. I am gonna go ahead and say a header view dot clips to bounds is true. And this is gonna ensure that nothing is gonna bleed outside of the bounds of the header view. So cool, now that we've got this, let's do our profile picture. So I'll say profile photo is going to be a UI image view. And what do we actually wanna do with this? We wanna create it with a frame, and actually we'll create it with a frame later on, but what I'm gonna do here is create it with the default image, and this is gonna be a system image, and I'm gonna go ahead and say this is a person image, and I believe that's one of the ones that SF Symbols, Apple's icon library provides. We're gonna go ahead and say that the tint color is gonna be white by default. We're also gonna go ahead and say the content mode is scale aspect fit, so nothing, uh, you know, believe and it maintains the aspect ratio. We'll go ahead and add it as a sub view of our header view. And most importantly, don't forget to assign the frame here. We're gonna go ahead and say that the width and height are going to be view.width divided by four, so one fourth of the width. Now, how do we calculate the X? Basically, view.width, subtracting the width of the image here, divided by two. And for the Y, this one's going to be a little different. We're going to be doing uh, the height, which is also view.width. So you could go ahead and say header view.height, subtracting this, and you could do divided by 2 uh, or a little higher. I'm going to say divided by maybe 1.8, so the image will be a little higher than uh, halfway up. Let me go ahead and line break all of this stuff so we get a little more readability, and we'll go ahead and give this a run and make sure at least our header is showing up now. So we're still not fetching the user's name quite yet. We're going to be doing that right after this. So let's go ahead and do that. Go ahead and give it a run, and... Let's see if we're seeing our header. So the premise here is we're gonna create this header and then we're gonna issue a call to our database to get you know updated data. And once we have that updated data, we're gonna create it again. So it looks like we are seeing our uh, picture here, our profile photo, uh, which is our placeholder. We've got our header. We're not showing the email quite yet, so let me go ahead and do that next. I also wanna use a different, uh, a different image here. We're gonna use person.circle. Let's make sure we spell that correctly. And for the Y position, we maybe want to move this a little higher. So maybe we'll go ahead and say divided by 2.5. Go ahead and give this a run. And I'm not going to fidget with the you know UI too much. Very subjective. But hopefully we get to put something nice looking together. So go ahead and bear with the simulator. We'll check this. And all right, looking pretty good. We can probably stick the email address right below it. And it'll look pretty decent. So let's go ahead and do the email address next. 
Now the name I'll, I'll leave uh, for the very end. So the email is going to be a email label, just like that. It's going to be a UI label where C direct is going to be 20. Y is going to be the profile photo dot bottom plus maybe, I don't know, plus 30. The width will be view dot width minus 40 since the X is in fact 20 and the height is going to be 100. Let's go ahead and say header view, add sub view for the email label. Email label dot text is going to be the current email. We're going to go ahead and also say email label dot text alignment will be centered. And we also want to bump up the font here for our email label since it is a part of the header. So we want to have a bit of a nicer font. So we're going to go ahead and say system font of size maybe 24 with a weight of either bold or medium. Let's try bold and see what that looks like. So we're gonna go with bold, and that's looking pretty good. Now before I actually go ahead and give it a run, let's write a little bit more code out. So we had made the height here, uh, you know, the same as the width, so it's a square, but it looks a little too tall. So I'm gonna go ahead and say width, and we're gonna say divided by 1.5, so it's not quite tall. And the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is inside of this actual uh, function, or either inside of this or here, we can go ahead and actually say uh, fetch profile data. And the reason I'm gonna do it here is because we first are gonna set up the header in this kind of placeholder state where you know we don't have the profile image sets. And once we go ahead and uh, get the call back from fetching the user's profile data, we're gonna call this function again. In fact, that time we're gonna pass in some data here. So this will redraw itself with the proper image, the user's name, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go ahead and say fetch profile data, just like that. And let's go ahead and create this right below here. And we're gonna need to extend our database manager to go ahead and do this fetch. Now you might be wondering, how are we gonna actually set the, you know, like the image uh, contents here? We're not really passing anything in, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we're gonna extend this to have that data passed in. So we're gonna have a image, uh, or we can have maybe a profile photo URL, which is going to be URL optional with a default value of nil. We're also going to have a name, which is going to be a string optional default value of nil. And make sure that you put the default value of nil, otherwise you're going to run into issues. And essentially what we're going to do in here is we are going to go in fact and say if let's name equals name, we're going to say make the title of the profile the name. And similarly, if let URL is your profile photo URL, we can go ahead and set the uh, contents of our profile photo image view from the URL. So we would need to uh, fetch image here. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and hook this guy up. So we're going to jump into the database manager and again, use command shift O to open up this quick uh, window to jump to different files. And we're going to add a function here to get a profile. So we have get all posts. We have get posts uh, for a particular user here. So what I care about is getting a particular blog uh, profile or getting a particular user profile, I should say. So let's see, we have get post insert. It looks like we don't have a function for it. So we're gonna create it here. I'm gonna say public uh, func. We're gonna say public func get user. And it's gonna take in a email address and the completion handler on this guy is going to return to us a user optional. And it's gonna be optional in case, you know, we're not able to construct a user from the past in uh, email address. And this thing is gonna return void to us. And in fact, what we can go about to doing is we can simply take the code that we wrote in here. So the document ID is gonna be the same email address that we have passed in. So let's make sure that we are doing that correctly. So here we're just saying user.email, we wanna say email, and we wanna replace the period and the at symbol with underscores. And if you take a look here, we're inserting into the collection for users. So all that we need to go ahead and do is simply say on this uh, users collection dot document, we can say go ahead and uh, get this document. And by getting this document, we're gonna get what's called a snapshot back, which is gonna contain the information that we see on the right hand side here. So a email as well as a name. So now that we've got this, let's go ahead and say snapshots. This is going to be an error. And we're gonna go ahead and say guard let 
uh, data is going to be snapshots.data, I believe is what it's called. And this is going to give you back basically a dictionary of string and string. So we're going to say make this a dictionary of string to string, just like that. And we're also going to verify that the error is in fact nil because we don't want an error to occur. We want to make sure we catch it if it does. So now that we've actually done this stuff, we can go ahead and grab the email. So we already have an email being passed in in the argument, so we don't need to get it from the uh, data. But what we do need to get is the user's name. So I'm going to go ahead and say name is going to be from the data a name just like that so let's make sure that we have used that key in the database which in fact we have so that's looking pretty good now this is going to give us back an optional string because the dictionary might be empty so one thing that you might want to do is stick it here in your uh, guard let statement so once we have a name here we can go ahead and create a user object and it's going to be name for name email for email and profile url will still be nil now we're going to adjust this after we add support to go ahead and upload this, but essentially what we're going to want to do, and actually let's go ahead and just do it right now. What we're going to want to go ahead and do here uh, is try to get the URL uh, from the dictionary. So we'll go ahead and say the URL is going to be a URL optional, and we'll go ahead and say if let URL is going to be in the dictionary of data, and the key that I guess that we can go ahead and use is profile. Uh, photo, maybe that's the URL that we're going to go ahead and use. We can go ahead and say set this URL or try to create, I guess, this URL with the URL string that you see here, which I'm going to go ahead and rename. So with a string, just like that. So the premise here is once we have actually uploaded a photo, we can go ahead and stick the profile URL in the database here, and that'll allow us to go ahead and fetch this later on. So once we have the URL, even if it's optional, we can pass it into this argument and that'll create our user object. And we can say completion handler and pass back the user just like that. Now, one thing that you might be wondering, and actually I'm wondering it myself, when we go into our storage, we actually save things uh, with reference IDs. So instead of actually saving the URL, Another good uh, pattern that you might want to use here is save the profile photo uh, as a reference. And we're going to fetch the URL from Firebase after we have that reference. So we'll go ahead and actually save this as a reference here. So I'm going to go ahead and actually make this nil once again. So let me go ahead and actually do that. We'll go ahead and say nil here. And this is going to actually be a reference. And let's go ahead and adjust our user object here. So our user object currently has this profile photo URL. So I'm going to go ahead and call this profile photo uh, reference, and it's going to be a string. And if you go ahead and uh, go back to your database manager and update this, we can go ahead and pass in the reference. So here we're going to go ahead and say a ref is going to be a string optional. We'll go ahead and say make this the ref. And let's see, we can actually get away with just doing it like this. All right, because we want this to be something optional, so we don't actually even need to unwrap it. And over here, we can simply pass in ref. Now, since we changed that argument, if you hit command B, you're going to notice that uh, you have some build errors, which is expected because we just tweaked this. And the main one you're going to have here is we renamed this to URL uh, to a reference, go ahead and update that, and hopefully you should be good to go. And let's go back to our database manager. So now that we've actually uh, written this function out where we are fetching the user, we can go ahead and call it from the uh, profile view controller. So let's go to the profile view controller here. And in here, I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, database manager shared and we want to go ahead and get a user with the given email that we have and this is going to return to us an optional user object so we'll say guard let user is going to be user and we're going to unwrap it and once we've done this we want to go ahead and call this function again to set up our table header view but the only difference is we want to pass in the values now so we're going to go ahead and say that weak self we're going to say self setup table header and we're going to want to pass in the arguments so profile uh, url here is going to be nil still and for the name we're going to say user dot name 
Now again, since we've updated this to take in a profile reference, instead of this argument being a URL, we're gonna make this a ref. It's gonna be a string optional just like that. And our unwrap here is gonna be different as well. We'll say ref is our profile photo ref just like that. And in this case, what we can actually go ahead and do after we have gotten the data back, instead of passing a nil here, I'm gonna go ahead and pass in user dot profile uh, picture reference. That way, after we have set our initial profile photo, you're gonna go ahead and see that that value will not be nil. And most importantly, don't forget that you need to do this on the main thread since this call is gonna result in a UI update and all user interface updates should be done on the main thread. And let's see, the other thing I'm gonna go ahead and do on here is say self.user is going to be user. We're gonna hang on to an instance of the user on this uh, particular controller in case we actually need it. So I'm gonna go ahead and declare a user optional on here and we're gonna go and give our app a run. And let's see what actually happens. And assuming uh, you know the name updates, we're gonna work on uploading a profile photo next so we can actually fetch it and show it in the profile. So let's go ahead and do that. And boom, you can see the title here has changed to iOS Academy. By default, instead of using the email address, what I'm gonna go ahead and do up here in view to load is we are going to go ahead and say that the title here is going to simply be a profile once the view controller initially loads. So cool, we're looking pretty good. The next thing that's left to do, or the next thing that we want to do is not open up Notification Center, but is uh, actually upload our uh, profile photo. So you can see here that the label text color for our email should also be white. I have not updated that, so let me go ahead and do that really fast. We'll say text color here is white. And let's also adjust the Y value. So we're gonna say uh, plus 10, just like that. And let's work on how we're gonna actually upload a profile photo. So we're gonna use the photo library with an image picker controller. So essentially when the user taps on this image view here, we should show a, a way to actually update their profile photo. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna first say on the header view, we're gonna say, is user interaction enabled is true since we want to allow interaction and on the uh, profile photo we're also going to say is user interaction enabled true and we're going to add a tap gesture to the profile photo so we're going to say a tap is a ui tap gesture recognizer is what i'm looking for and the tap gesture is going to take a target and an action and the action is going to be uh, did tap profile photo and we're going to go ahead and say for the profile photo uh, add a gesture recognizer for our tap just like that now it's going to give you an error until you go ahead and actually create this function i'm just going to stick it right below it just like that and inside of here, we're gonna go ahead and show a picker. Now, I'm not gonna put camera support in here since we're working on a simulator, but it's pretty easy to extend this to allow the user to use the camera as well. So we'll go ahead and say, the picker is going to be a UI image picker controller, just like that. And on our picker, we wanna do a couple things. We're gonna first go ahead and say the source type is going to be the photo library. The picker's delegate is going to be self, the picker allows editing is going to be true. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for allows editing is going to be true. And finally, we're gonna to want to go ahead and present this picker with an animation, which is going to be true. Now, a couple of things to take note of here. The delegate is gonna be complaining, which is expected. We need to conform to that protocol. So I'm gonna come down here and write an extension for profile view controller. Now you can extend the protocol at the top, but just for the sake of cleanliness since this controller is getting a little big we're gonna do it down here we're gonna conform to the navigation controller delegates as well as the image picker delegates you need both of them and we are going to implement two functions here so there is a image picker controller did cancel which in this case all we're gonna say is go ahead and dismiss the picker and the other one is image picker did finish picking and in this case, we're gonna actually get the image out of the picker. So we can go ahead and say from the info, uh, get the uh, edited image is what we're looking for, which is going to give us the cropped square image that the user has picked. 
And now that we have the image here, we would want to call into our storage manager and try to actually upload the image. And I don't believe we've actually created that function yet. Looks like we have upload uh, a user profile picture. Look at that. We actually stubbed it out, I believe, already. And we can pass in an email and an image. So we're simply going to pass in the current email as well as the image. And this is gonna have a completion handler, it looks like. And this completion handler will give us a bool back in terms of success. Now, I don't think we actually wrote this image out on the other side in the storage manager. So I'm gonna jump in there momentarily and go ahead and write it out. Now, one thing that comes to mind, whenever you're on somebody else's profile, you don't wanna be able to change their profile photo. So one thing that you might wanna go ahead and do is selectively add or show this picker based on if it is a current user's profile. So how do we do that? So we're gonna go ahead and say, my email is going to be from user defaults, the string for key email, and we're gonna compare this email address against the email of the current user uh, who is, you know, whose profile we are viewing. So we're gonna get their email and we are going to also come in here and say, guard that my email doesn't equal the current user email. Actually, we wanna make sure it does equal. So we're gonna say my email is the current email. So you can only show this picker if the profile that we're viewing is the same as my email. So we can actually combine these guard statements to make it a little more readable. Go ahead and stick a comma there. I'm gonna stick that there. And this way we're only gonna show the picker when it is our user's profile. So we can't you know, willy nilly change everyone's profile, which would not be good. So cool, now that we've done that, let me go ahead and give it a run, make sure we're seeing our picker and then we'll work on uploading the image and updating the database. All right, bear with me here. We're gonna go to our profile as soon as the app loads. We'll go ahead and tap this and we should see the picker, boom, just like that. I'm gonna select this here. It's gonna allow us to crop. We're gonna go ahead and uh, select it. Now, one thing that you'll notice is we're not actually dismissing the controller, which is not good. So let's go ahead and do that in here as well. So once the image has been selected, we are gonna go ahead and say picker, dismiss animated true and completion is nil. And we're gonna implement this function here in our storage manager. So how do we actually upload a photo? It's really, really simple. We had created our container here. So on our container, I'm gonna go ahead and say create a reference. And you could actually create a reference with a particular path. So we can add children to it. So instead of doing this reference like that, we are gonna go ahead and say create a reference with a, a path. And the path is going to be basically a slash separated path. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, profile uh, pictures and then it's going to be a uh, profile picture for the current email that is being passed in. So you can go ahead and uh, figure out how you want to actually name your photos. Now we're gonna use the PNG extension and the way we get PNG data out is by saying uh, image dot png data just like that and i don't think we should have an issue of using the at symbol uh, as a part of the directory path in here um, however we might have that issue so instead of taking that risk i'm going to go ahead and say path is going to be email replacing occurrences of the at so we're going to say replacing occurrence occurrences of the at symbol with an underscore, and this is what we did in the database as well. And I'm also gonna do this uh, for the uh, dots. So we're gonna do replacing occurrences of periods with an underscore. So now that we've got that, we're gonna go ahead and say the path is going to be profile pictures. We're gonna stick in the path components here, and this is going to be photo.png. And we're just gonna overwrite if the user has a previous photo. And now that we've created this reference, we can say, go ahead and put data here, which is basically whatever you're uploading. And we're gonna to wanna to use the one that has a completion handler. So we're gonna say, put the data here, which is going to be PNG data. Metadata is gonna be nil, and this is gonna give us a callback in terms of you know if we succeeded or not. So this is gonna have a metadata object. 
Whoops, and we're gonna go ahead and have an error object in here as well. Now on our metadata, I believe we can actually, in fact, get the download URL. Let's see if we can actually go ahead and get it. Looks like we actually can't. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here is we're gonna say the metadata is nil, and we're gonna, or not nil, and we're gonna verify the error is nil. And if those two things are the case, we know that we have succeeded. So we're gonna go ahead and say completion true. And in this case, we're gonna say completion is false. So now that we've actually done this, one other thing that you want to go ahead and do is update your uh, database. Now, how do we actually know what we want to update in our database? Well, it's actually quite simple. We know that this is going to be the reference to our profile photo. So we can simply compute this on the other side and update our database accordingly. And in fact, it might be even uh, a bit questionable if we know that that's kind of the hard coded schema of our reference, if we want to update it. But for this video, we are going to update it. So we're going to jump back into the profile view controller and we're going to say uh, if success uh, update database. So we'll go ahead and say on our database manager, we're going to say shared. I will say update, update profile photo. We're going to pass in an email. And what is this email going to be? Once again, it's going to be the current email. So we'll say current email, just like that. We are going to go ahead and reference weak self here so we don't cause a memory leak. We'll go ahead and say guard let strong self is self else we are going to return and this thing here will be strong self dot current email and let's see now this should have a callback for us we haven't actually created this function yet so let's jump into the database manager and inside of here we're going to create that function we're going to say update profile photo it's going to take in that email which is a string it's going to have a completion handler, which is our callback. We'll go ahead and say escaping. And perhaps this will return to us a bool indicating success. And inside of here, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at this. This is our path. So we're going to say path is going to be this guy. But if you think about it, we need to uh, convert the email where we're replacing the at and the uh, periods. So let's jump into the storage manager. And I'm going to go ahead and be lazy and copy and paste this thing. So here we have created, whoops, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for storage manager. We're going to go ahead and create the same path here. And since we're copy and pasting this in so many places, this should be a pretty immediate sign that we want to create it as a computed property in one place, but that's okay. So here is going to be our path and this whole thing is going to be our reference. So what we want to go ahead and do is we're going to update our users collection such that the reference, the one that we're referencing up here, no pun intended, is this reference here. So let me make this a little better in terms of naming. So we'll go ahead and say photo reference, just like that. We're replacing the at and this up here, the period. So now we're going to go ahead and say that this is our uh, reference in our database. So we'll say database reference is this guy, which is going to be users. And the document that we want to grab off of it is going to be the email address. So we've called it document ID here, but we're going to go ahead and simply call it uh, path. Now from this, we're going to go ahead and get the document. So we're going to say DB ref get document. And this is going to give us a snapshot once again, as well as an error. And we're going to go ahead and say guard var data is going to be our snapshot.data. We're going to verify that the error is in fact nil. And once we've actually got that data back, we want to go ahead and update the data and the reference. The key that we want to update is what we're using here, which is profile photo. So we're going to say profile photo. And the reference here is going to be this guy, our photo reference, which is a string reference to where we have uploaded the profile photo. So profile picture, uh, photos, underscore path, slash photo dot png and now that, that you've actually updated this you can go ahead and say uh, db ref and you're going to go ahead and set the data again and you're going to use the updated data so we're going to go ahead and say this is data since we've now updated this key and once again this is going to have a completion handler with a error inside of it and lastly we're going to say completion uh, error is nil so if the error you know is nil we know that we have succeeded 
and we're gonna basically call the callback and we should be good to go. So hopefully that made all, a bunch of sense to all of you. I know I jumped around a little bit, but just to recap, we basically use the email as the unique key here for the path. We create the path reference, which is this hard-coded schema we have where the only dynamic aspect is the center path components. We create a reference to the user in the database. We get their document and we basically update it with the latest uh, value here, which makes sense. So now that we've actually gone ahead and done this, let's go back to our profile view controller and let's work on rendering this image. So once we have actually uh, saved the photo as well as updated our database, on the main thread, we want to go ahead and say fetch the user's uh, information again. So we're going to say strong self. We're going to go ahead and say fetch the profile data. And if we go back to this function, let's make sure we don't have an error here. Looks like we do. Let's see what's going on. Here we should be saying success in. Maybe we'll go ahead and call it updated in so it's a little more clear. So we'll say guard, make sure the database was updated. Once we've actually called this function, we kick off the fetch of the user object again, and we also pass in the user dot profile uh, photo reference. And in this now, I'm gonna go ahead and add a uh, print, and we're gonna say found photo ref, and we're gonna have a reference in here. So go ahead and give that a run. I know we jumped around quite a bit, but let's make sure it's working, and then I'll do a recap as well once we finish out this uh, if block here to render the profile photo. Essentially, the steps once again are pick a picture, upload it, update the database, and then fetch the latest data. So we'll go ahead and select this, and we're going to pick a photo. I'm going to go with this guy here. looks pretty nice. We're going to zoom in a little bit so it looks nicer. We'll go ahead and hit this button to continue, and we should have uploaded it and updated our database. And here we go. Here is our print found photo ref profile picture, here is my email address, and here is the photo, photo.png. And just to make sure that it's actually here, you can look at our database that has updated with that reference. And if we jump into our storage manager, you'll also notice that we do have the folder here, followed by the uh, another folder for my email, my user email, and photo.png. So we are successfully uploading photos after a bunch of code that we jumped around in, let's go about rendering this photo in our profile now. So how do we render it? Well, we've got the reference here. We're gonna first get the uh, profile photo URL because our reference is nothing more than a string. So we're gonna jump into our storage manager and we need to have a function to get a URL for a given path. So we already stubbed out the function here. So here we're saying download uh, URL for a profile picture, and instead of passing in a user, I'm gonna pass in a reference. And this is simply going to be a string. And what we can go ahead and do here is we can go ahead and say container, and we wanna create a reference with a path. And it's actually, instead of calling this a ref here, maybe we'll call it a path. And from this path, we're gonna say, hey Firebase, go ahead and give us a download URL. And this is gonna to return to us a URL optional, just like that, and we're gonna actually ignore the error here. And the completion handler here, basically we can just pass back that URL, and on the other side, the caller, we're gonna verify that the URL is non-nil before using it. So let's jump back now into our profile view controller, and in this if block, we're gonna go ahead and simply say, storage manager shared, go ahead and get me the download URL for the profile picture with this particular reference. It's gonna give me a nullable URL back. And inside of here, we're gonna first verify the URL is not nil. And the next thing we wanna do is actually set the image from the contents of that URL. So how do we do that? We're gonna create a task to download. So we're gonna say task is gonna be URL session. We're gonna say shared. And we wanna do a data task, which has a URL and a completion handler callback. So this last one here. So we're gonna say data task with URL. Completion will give us data. We're gonna ignore the error and the uh, URL response. We're gonna say guard let data 
is going to be data verify you've got some data back from the url and once we've got the data back we're going to go ahead and say on the main queue since it is a ui operation once again we are going to say profile photo set image and the image we're going to set let's see if i'm using the correct thing here so profile photo should be a image view let's make a make sure i did the correct one here yep profile photo is an image view we're going to go ahead and say the image on the sky will be a ui image with the data creating a ui image that we just fetched and don't forget to do task uh, dot resume because we do want to actually kick off the download task now this function has gotten quite large so one thing that you might want to go ahead and do uh, is actually create another function to do the download. Now we can abstract and clean up our code as we continue on, but for the sake of time, let's just go ahead and give it a run and make sure that we're actually seeing our profile photo. Bear with my simulator here. We should almost be good to go. We're going to click on this and we should see our profile photo get updated just like that. Boom, it has gotten updated. Now, one thing you'll notice is that we no longer have the nice circular look and feel that we had before. And that's because we need to set a corner radius on the profile photo. So I'm going to go ahead and say layer masks to bounds is true. Corner radius is going to be on the layer as well, and this is simply going to be the width divided by two, and that should actually be sufficient. Go ahead and give it a run once more, and we should be in business. Now, the one other thing that we didn't touch on too much here is the fact that we're not actually getting the user's you know, posts. We're just showing some dummy data. So once our image loads, let's verify that, looking good. And actually, what's cool about this before I continue on is you can select this and even change the profile picture now the way that we have built this out. So if you select a different picture and uh, confirm here, you'll see that that picture gets uploaded and this should refresh itself with the latest image. Now, it takes a little bit of time because the upload you know, takes a second or two, but the beauty of building this out in this way is that you can up update your profile picture with, uh, you know, simple code. So now we want to actually do something about these profile uh, blog posts themselves. You'll notice here that we have a lot of code to do a bunch of things, but we're not dealing with that table view here. So how do we account for that? So we're going to first deal with authoring a new post in the next video, but I am going to stub out a function here, and this is going to be func fetch. Uh, posts and essentially what we want to do is we're going to go ahead and fetch the posts that are uh, you know owned by this user and that's going to be a array of blog post objects that we had created earlier on in the series and the number of rows that we're going to have are going to be posts.count and inside of the cell for row we essentially want to get the nth post and show a preview of it. And when the user taps on one of the rows, we want to open up the actual post. So it might sound a little confusing right now. Bear with me here. And in the next few videos, it'll start to look a lot more like a you know polished app. We are going to go ahead and bring in did select a row at index path. This is basically what gets called when you know we go ahead and tap on one of the rows we're going to deselect it and here we are going to create a post view controller and this is basically where you can view a post hence the term and we're going to go ahead and say navigation controller dot push the view controller animated true just like that vc dot title is going to be the nth posts that we have selected dot title just like that so if this part doesn't make sense no worries we're not there yet i'm just stubbing out for you know anticipating when we do get here but that is the premise let's go ahead and give it one more run let's make sure we don't have any errors it looks like we do let's see what i messed up minor typo there and we'll wrap it up here. If you haven't done so already, drop a like down below, subscribe if you're into iOS and wanna stick around. Let me know in the comments uh, if you have any questions. I know this video was a little jumpy from place to place, but hopefully all that made sense for the most part. You'll see now when you come to our profile, you don't actually see any posts here because we're, uh, we've tied the number of rows or even our dummy cells with the number of elements in this posts array, which is empty by default. So looking pretty good. So thanks again for watching. I'll catch y'all in the next part where we start to figure out how to author posts. See you guys there.